A Brief History of Eastern Auric Migrating bands began settling the eastern portion of the Auric continent, Flanes, over a millennium ago. The Flan tribesmen were hardy and capable hunters, but not particularly warlike, and their small and scattered groups made no appreciable civilizing effect. The Sewell peoples, mainly fleeing from the great wars in the Sulawese Empire, moved northward through the Kendine Pass of the southern Crystal Mist Mountains, now known as the Hell Furnaces, and spread out in all directions. The fierce Oridian tribes likewise moved east, thrusting aside Flan and Sulawese in their path. The Orid migrations were similar in cause to those of the Sewell, in that the backlunish Sulawese wars and the hordes of Uraz and associated humanoid groups used as mercenaries by both sides tended to pillage northward and eastward, driving the Orids before them. When the invoked devastation came upon the backlunish, their own Magi brought down the rain of colorless fire in a last terrible curse. And this so affected the Sulawese Empire as to cause it to become the Sea of Dust. Meanwhile, sufficient numbers of the Bakalunish remained to hold the northern plains to maintain their small states against all comers. Uraz, Hijeblink, Jebli, Chelbit, and such humanoids alike. For two centuries, the Ord and Sul battled each other and the fragmenting humanoid hordes for possession of the central area of the Flaness, incidentally engaging the Flaness and demihumans. In a few places, the two racial stocks intermixed, notably the Sheldamar Valley, where, except for the hold of the Sea Princes and the peoples of the Kingdom of Keoland, Grand March, and the Ulex States and nearby petty lands, are mixed Ored Sewell stock. To the far north, four of the strongest and fiercest clans managed to retain large stretches of ground as Sulawese. The majority of the Sewellites were pushed to the extreme south into the Amedio jungle, the Tilvanot Peninsula, the Dushken Islands, and even as far as across the narrow Tilva Strait into Hep Monoland. The success of the Oridian domination of so much of the Flanes was in part due to their friendliness towards the original demi-human peoples of the area, Dwer, Noniz, Hobniz, Olve, and their cooperation greatly strengthened the Oridians. The willingness of the Flané to join forces with the Oridian armies also proved to be a considerable factor. Perhaps the biggest asset the Oridians had, however, was the vileness of the Sulawese. For the majority lied, stole, slew, and enslaved whenever they had inclination and opportunity. There were exceptions, of course, such as the houses of Rola, and Nahili, late migrants who settled and held the Sheldomar as already mentioned. Rebellious provinces was powerless to prevent the move. Determined nonetheless to bring the juniors to its knees, a large force was gathered to suppress the newly independent kingdom when a coalition of fruits, Shna, and mercenary barbarians mounted a major foray into the Erdian North Province. The overking swung his massed army northeast, and soon the invaders were crushed. But the cost in men and material was high, and in the end, the campaigning season arrived before any further action could be taken. Nairon marshaled its men and grew in strength, so that the following year saw only skirmishes and feints, and Nairon was effectively a separate and distinct state, violently hostile to its eastern neighbor, and ready to aid any of its foes. It was at this time the evil began to grow within the rulers of the great kingdom. The House of Rax became decadent, its policies ineffectual and aimed at appeasement. The powerful noble houses took this as their cue to set up palatinate-like states and rule their fiefs as if they were independent kingdoms. The last heir of the House of Rax fell to assassination during the turmoil between crowns. When the demon-serving House of Nalex ascended to the Malachite throne, 
The whole of the South Province refused to swear loyalty, and they joined the Iron League. This pact with the free city of Irongate, the Zack of Onwall, and the Lord of the Isles certainly gave the League a stronger bargaining position. It assured its status by enabling the Confederation to negotiate a treaty of mutual protection between League states and the Kingdom of Nyrond. This treaty remains in force to this day. Consensus of opinion holds that all the Overkings who have ruled from the Malachite throne since era 450 CY, the line of the House of Nalex, are insane or demon-ridden or both. Evil is in the ascendancy everywhere in the Flannes, while the Great Kingdom revels in debauchery. Tribes of vicious humanoids have banded together and rule the whole area. Bone March, Ayuz, certainly under the leadership of humans. The Pomage, the bandit kingdoms wax stronger while thieves, assassins, and orders of evil clerics assume the rulership of city and state alike. There is hope, of course, for Nyrond is not lost to evil. For Yondi and Valuna in the central Flannes are strong in the cause of justice and good. Although the demi-humans have avoided general involvement in human wars, the formation of the demi-human principalities of Selene and Ulek highlights the fact that they will resist invasion from the humans inhabiting a state. They react in one of two manners when the realm becomes oppressive and or evil. They either make their own territory separate from the surrounding lands and unhealthy for intruders, or they remove to an area more suitable to their ethos. The many petty states of the Flanes provide ample choices for the latter option, as do the cooperative humans of many such areas. Human and demi-human alliances on a large scale are not out of the question any longer. The Battle of Emerity Meadows highlights the growing realization of mutual interests. Contingents of men-at-arms and cavalry from Furyundi and Valuna, together with a force of dwarves from the Lork Mills, gnomes from the Quran Hills, and an army of elven archers and spearmen fought together against a vast horde of humanoids, orcs, gnolls, and ogres predominantly, and evil men. The opposing forces met on the grassy fields south of the Velverdiva River, several leagues below the city of Verbabonk. The allied forces were closing upon the stronghold of the evil creatures, a huge, walled fortress known as the Temple of Elemental Evil, not far from the unfortunate village of Hamlet. When elven scouts reported that a huge army was approaching from the south, the Marshal of Furyandi, leader of the combined forces, ordered a withdrawal northward to a position scouted earlier. Light cavalry skirmishes were sent out to screen the withdrawal, and no real fighting took place that day. When the horde of evil creatures marched forth next dawn, they were confronted by the serried ranks of the allied army. The pikes of Furyandi and Valuna were arrayed so their flank was secured by the Velverdiva. In the center were the banners of horse, and on the allied left were deployed bands of dwarves and gnomes, with a few units of elven archers placed in the intervals between. The humanoids fell immediately upon the left, while the men in the evil ranks rode to engage the center and right. The hordes of orcs, gnolls, and ogres thrust aside their hated foes and rushed to encircle the balance of the allied army. Thus the fatal trap was sprung and the whole allied army pivoted, squadrons of knights driving into the rear of the onrushing horde of evil and squares of elves emerging from the gnarly forest on the left to seal the pocket. Trapped in a pocket with the bend of the Velver Diva at their backs and the human and demi-human armies forming the cord of the Ark, the packed mass of evil humans and humanoids fought hopelessly. After the great slaughter inflicted, the army went on to besiege the Temple of Elemental Evil, and it fell in a fortnight. The demoness Zagatmoy was imprisoned in the ruins of the place, with special wars to prevent her escape. Only a few of the wicked leaders of the temple managed to escape 
and it is suspected that these individuals were responsible for the subsequent kidnapping and total disappearance of the Prince of Furyundi. The prince, betrothed to the daughter of the Plar of Aluna, and serving as provost of that state, as well as Marshal of Furyundi, was of key importance to the forces of good. Upon his marriage to Jolene of Aluna, the two states would become a joint entity, the arch cleric ruling in matters spiritual, and the prince, ascending the throne and becoming king, would rule in matters temporal. This state, with demi-human alliances, would certainly wage continual war on the evil nations, and the previous results boded ill for its opponents. The current state of affairs in the Flanes is confused indeed. Humankind is fragmented into isolationist realms, in different nations, evil lands, and states striving for good. The Bakalunish countries in the northwest are more powerful. Nomads, bands, and barbarians raid southwards every spring and summer. Humanoid enclaves are strongly established and scattered throughout the continent and wicked insanity rules the great kingdom. The eventual result of all of this cannot be foretold.